Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, we explore how the Red Raiders can get back to winning the tight ones. Also exploring how they can make this a tight one. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raiders! Everything runs through Lubbock. Great to see you again on Locked On at Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. And thanks to those of you making us your first listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Hope you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time app. Download the Game Time app and create an account and use the code Locked On College for 20 bucks off your first purchase. With the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. And Chris, you are fresh off of your conversation with Red Raider head coach Joey McGuire, as you do weekly on the uh, Joey McGuire Coaches Show. And I would have to imagine, just given some general themes this week, uh, one theme for Coach McGuire is just anxiousness to get back on the field and generate something new, win or lose. There's been a hell of a lot of talk, obviously, about your season debut. You and I were just talking off the air. Even though Monday was a holiday, it's felt like it's a long week as you continue to uh digest what you did there in laramie wyoming or did not do in laramie wyoming so i I think just new opportunity or a new opportunity has got to be exciting for a team clearly that wants to bounce back and and show that that wasn't really representative of who they are in week one you know i've done the coaches show since i don't know 2007 maybe so i've you know that's that's a lot of head coaches and a lot of uh (laughs) tough losses you know, there's been a lot of good wins too, but it's always, that's always one thing I fret and stress about is like, cause I think I told you this earlier in the week, Joey and those guys have moved on from that Wyoming game three ish days ago. And, but you know, you, that's your job is to kind of relive it, go through it a little bit, win or loss, uh, you know, on, and so I, I could tell that he was like, he, he, he humored me and he, he was willing to kind of get into a few of the uh, of the things and just kind of talked about how big Jacob Rodriguez was going down, um, was really surprised that, that Gino uh, thought he would be just have been better. I think he had shown them he was better all throughout August. <clears throat> and I think I think he, he again pointed to some of those penalties, but then it's like you, you, you do the, the losers thing too, where you go, if this changes, if this changes, if this changes, if this changes, and if this changes, if any one of those things change, you know, that's a different, you know, cause I, th- I think he actually talked about a, one of those fourth downs. Okay. Uh, not the rabbit one, which was in, in overtime, but it was one of the, I think the, the ones in the, in regulation, but if they would have stopped them, then, you know, then that, that checks the box on their, their seven point plan to win. And like you went on, on fourth downs, but I think, uh, you know, Wyoming ended up going, you know, two for two instead of one for two, you know, he was just pointing to some, some of those kinds of things. But anyway, I, after we, I said, okay, moving on, we'll, we'll start talking that he goes, thank you. So he was just, uh, he was ready to, to, yeah, I could just tell they're, they're ready to, this is one of those deals where you lose in that way, uh, a long way from what feels like home in a weird spot that you've never been to before. And you just can't wait to, you know, get, get back out there and, and you're right. Uh, and it just so happens that there's a lot of attention on this game this weekend, but yeah, they're, they're ready to be back out there. So, uh, but it was a packed house. Um, Joey was great. I think he, he always is in those settings. Um, and I think, uh, I think that they were, you know, they're, they're just, they've had a good week. I mean, like, I don't think he would tell me otherwise, but I think they, they felt like he was just ready to go and it's tons of, uh, they've got tons of recruits in on the weekend. I mean, there's just a lot, a lot of buildup here, uh, with the weekend, but yeah, ready to, ready to roll for sure. And he, he was given a duck call. His uh, his personal assistant gave him uh, gave him a duck call. Alicia Weatherford gave him a duck call. So he's been trying. He said it sounds like a kazoo right now. I'm working on it. I'm trying to get better at it. But uh, yeah, he was uh, he's ready to go duck hunting for sure. Oh, okay. I was gonna say Donald or Daffy. I didn't know which accent he was going with, but uh, <laughs> that that's good. And if you see Coach McGuire bringing something up to his lips during the game on Saturday night, he's not vaping out there, boys <laughs> and girls. He's calling up the duck. <laughs> There you go. Something along those lines. 
Uh, yeah, and man, all the bells and whistles that are going to be uh, revealed here this weekend. I mean, it's a loss kind of put a damper on the whole thing, obviously, but we're still going to be out there. We're still going to party. We're still going to lather up and get ready. But yeah, you've got the lights and you got the sound system. And obviously, we'll get our first look in person, up close and personal, aside from you construction cam sickos. And I conclude or include myself among that group. We'll get our first look in person at what's going on in the south end zone. So, you know, aside from that damn product on the field, we had a lot to be excited about heading into this weekend. It was just that football thing that screwed it up. Uh, but Chris, th there's a lot going down this weekend as far as the fan experience that's uh, going to be a little new, right? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, the, you know, because I've, I've had people, uh, you know, a, a few people that I even know closely go, man, if they just spend less time on that construction over there or this hype video and then more time <laughs> practicing on the field, maybe our everything would have been fine up in Wyoming. And I'm just like, it, it makes my my head want to explode. He was um, only on the crane once, <laughs> folks, for like an hour. That was it. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah, yeah. Um, th there there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of like hype and and pomp and circumstance. Uh, I, I will say this: there will never be enough pyro in, in, as far as at athletic events for my taste. Agreed. I think you just can't you can't have enough of it. Um, so I've been seeing this from outside the football training facility and like the the outside of it where a lot of the mess is yeah and it looks like a train wreck i mean it looks like just i mean there's dirt everywhere and there's just you know it's sawing and digging and all just all kinds of stuff but i think when you're inside the stadium you'll kind of get a view of of what this thing is going to look like and it's going to be impressive i mean it's going to be extremely impressive uh but i think i'm, I'm excited for people to get to kind of get a feel for that and the the scope of it uh, up close, uh, because I think that you, you you'll start to really get a feel like wow, um, they're they're going up with two hundred thirty million dollars worth of structure here, and uh, there some of it is right there. So anyway, yeah, and for some of us old timers who are going to keep uh, flinching as we glance over to the south end zone to check the double T scoreboard, they are going to have a temporary scoreboard, but I'm just afraid there's going to be some old wives in there having to grab their husbands' arms and saying, "Honey." It hasn't been there all day. You're, you're saying things. <laughs> the double T scoreboard hadn't been there in months. But yeah, we'll feel a little bit different. We'll feel much different, obviously, next season. But I had forgotten that, Cowan. I, I, not, until you just said that, I just had forgotten that that wouldn't be there for a period. That's where I go yeah. all my life. That's where I go. Yeah. Right? I, I, Either way, that's where I'm going. And, and that's where, you know, when, when the game goes final, whatever the final score is, that's what people take the picture of. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the, there'll be some subtle nuances. I think we'll all have to kind of, you know, get used to because I mean, they're, they're they're there's a giant trailer out in the and it's a huge trailer and it's a very upscale, nice structure oh, where yeah. the, the locker rooms will be and all that in the east side of the parking lot. These will actually be Texas Tech's locker rooms in the spring. As they tear down their their current locker room. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and so all, all of those things. It just seems somewhat disjointed uh i think oh, that yeah. people need to I, I they will tell you repeatedly and i can only say it so many times but try to get there early because there's not as many entry points into this deal and if you show up at 5 45 thinking okay i'm gonna time my last beverage uh and then hit hit the hit the head one more time and then i'm gonna go to my seat you're probably gonna be standing in line and miss uh kickoff and all those kinds of there, things so. there is no access on the south end of the stadium you cannot walk between the indoor facility and the stadium as i know i don't know about thirty thousand of you do every game day that is going to be a cluster on that end so just prepare for it and i hope it's better as the weeks roll by but yeah, that but this that, one this going to be an gonna adjustment be, yeah they, they they would all tell you we we would love for everybody to be north like try to hit the north end of the stadium on either side of it and um, as someone yeah. coming in the Southwest gate, I also would like for all of you to be North. Let's go <laughs> North. Like the old double T scoreboard used to say, head North Raiders, North gate, North gate. Let's emphasize that here today. Okay. Yeah. Enough about the accoutrements. Let's get back to that pesky football aspect of this. <laughs> you know, the reason why we're going to be there, Chris, yeah. because I know that something else you and Coach McGuire discussed and obviously has been on our minds leaving last season, heading into this season, and boom, we get it right out of the gate. Another tight 
situation. Late in the ball game with the chance for either team to win, one possession margin, having to respond to adversity, find a way to win games. You did it repeatedly a season ago, Chris. You didn't do it in week one, and I know we've got to get back to that. So I want to pick your brain on what that conversation was like from Coach McGuire's perspective and how you feel like we did get over that hump last year if a couple of things stand out to you because that wasn't the case for a long time man I remember so many of those Kingsbury years even some of the Wells years I guess where you're at the end of the season sitting there looking at six or seven losses and you're thinking man there's probably 17 points (laughs) that have separated us for the season at large but you got over that hump last year in your opinion what what was the key to that first today's episode brought to you by Nutrafol, and I know that men think losing their hair is inevitable, and maybe that's because 80% of men will experience thinning hair in their lifetime. It is normal, but it doesn't have to be your destiny, and you can get ahead of the thinning and take control of your hair's future with Nutrafol's science-backed hair growth supplement for men right now. It's a leading hair growth supplement. Nutrafol is helping improve growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage through Physician-formulated natural ingredients and their drug-free and patented technology provides consistent and reliable results without compromising your health or stamina. And you're going to need plenty of energy because your dance card is going to stay full with a revitalized quaff. So head on over to Nutrafol.com slash men to take their hair health wellness quiz so you can identify causes and get a personalized plan for better hair health through whole body wellness. Take the first step to visibly thicker and healthier hair at Nutrafol.com slash men. And now for a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our audience $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code Locked On College. That's Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code Locked On College and find out why. Over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. But you got over that hump last year. In your opinion, what what was the key to that? I think Trey Wolf, Gino Garcia, you know, difference here at least initially. I think is is because I mean Joey will tell you make your field goals, especially make the makeables. It's not nobody's asking you to make a sixty five yarder or even fifty five yarder and all that. But like you you gotta you gotta make the ones that are that are there to be made, which is essentially forty and in. Uh, you you weren't able to do that. Uh, I think you were last year pretty much every single time, like I think a hundred percent. I think the only ones Wolf made or missed last year were between 40 and 49 yards. And yet I think he was two of two on 50 plus. So just, just a a weird, weird deal there. I I don't think, and you correct me if I'm wrong here, you didn't have the, just the, the penalty issues last year to where you're going, fellas, what are you doing? Like, what, what are you thinking? Why, why would you, you know, and 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 I I think um, I think some of that you 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 can you can always kind of point to to a few of the penalty issues and, and disagree with them. But there was a few of those last week where you just don't you can't really disagree with like you know I just don't against Oklahoma against Texas against Houston uh, against some of those those close games that you won. I just don't remember some of those just. Like guys, I mean, we we've got to be smarter than that. I just don't, I don't think we, you you had some of that. Uh, I, I think being better on fourth down, uh, whether it was on defense or offense, I think you were last year. I don't think you were necessarily in in the first game. But there there there's a there's a whole formula that they follow, and I think he he yeah. told me last night on the seven things, and he goes, "You got to win." I think he told me he goes, "You got to win three or four of them to really." you know, the percentage would really tilt in your favor to, to win a game. And he's like, we won two, you know, two of the seven. And he goes, if we'd have just done a few other things, you know, but because c- here's the thing, they, they won the turnover margin. That's what's wild. Like you go on the road and you, you, you have, you have a plus in the turnover category. You're thinking, I like my chances, yeah. but. <laughs> and you not, took advantage of them. Quick, correct. That's part of the quick start. I mean, it's yep. complimentary football and, I uh, thought you were cooking with peanut oil. There's no question about it. And then all of a sudden, the oil ran dry. You ever fried a turkey in peanut oil? I don't know if it was peanut oil, but I have fried a turkey. It yeah. Was an exciting event. That's what they tell. That's what I was always told to use that peanut oil. And it's money, man. I mean, I'm telling you, giddy up. You're not 
You're not on the dime from the peanut lobby, are you? I've never heard this before, but this big <laughs> peanut push that's no, coming here. You just said peanut, and you peanuts. Just said, I did almost light my house on fire uh, years right. ago when I did that because that, that turkey wasn't quite thought out yet. Um, and some and close then, calls. Yeah. <laughs> I love pyro. I told you, man. I know, man. I, I'm a mark. Yeah. You show up on a Friday afternoon with a little pyro and some salted peanuts for our guy, a little peanut old fried turkey. You got a fun weekend at the level household. No, I think you're right to go immediately. That was the thing I was thinking about, at least. Uh, the penalties after the field goal kicking conversation. There's no way to get around thinking about threes instead of zeros. Would have won you the game, I think, on Saturday. Even with all of your miscues, you still could have won the game if you're getting threes instead of zeros uh, in a few of those situations. But, yeah, when the margin is going to be so tight and you are in those late-game situations where it's so close, clearly you're going to look back in hindsight and think about those penalties that were just shooting your toes off, basically self-inflicted wounds. And whether you agree with it or not, as far as some of the uh, interpretations and calls, uh, that's the way the dust settled. And yep. you got to know we're playing in this safest era, all you safetists out there who are running football, trying to make it something that every woman in the world can love. You just have to know you're operating within that era. And so like the Pierre hit or the sideline personal foul, these are horrific calls as far as the context of historical football, but within the con context of this very nervous era we live in, where if you're near the sideline, oh, that's frightening. Well, we better throw a flag, 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 flag. I mean, if you even like, they should make a new sideline, like first sideline, warning track sideline. Because if you even get near that thing and the quarterback like just has a hangnail and he steps on the white, boom, 15-yard personal foul. I mean, it, we just live in that era, and it sucks. But, again, we live in that era, and coaches have got to make players smarter. Players have to be smarter as it results or as it relates to what that results in when you put yourself in that situation. And I I want um, – and, and it's really at the, at the QB position. And we can go over the last decade since they started, like, uh, slowly but surely kind of tighten it up and protecting this position a bit more. Yeah. I want my guys to flop a bit or sell it. I don't I don't remember a tech quarterback selling anything from a like, you know, even even semi selling it when they get kind of out of bounds. I mean, just go for the garage sale. Just fall all over the place, knock the water cooler over. Like, oh my gosh, how he, he, he he's he's tried to kill me. Like, guy, I mean, I mean cuz Peasley last week He's he's up there uh, in the post game and he's talking about taking him in the deep end of the pool. I mean, he 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 flopped a couple of times. Oh yeah, they're, they're picking him up and he's like, you know, <laughs> trying to. And, and then when the call comes, he's like, okay, guys, all right, all right back now we're go. here we go. Yeah, I mean, he came out for a play. I mean, he's really milking this whole thing. Um, I, I just <laughs> I would like for Chuck was just I guess trying to be too tough. I don't know if Mahomes and all the guys before that you know it's like come on man flop. You know, just just fake it on occasion because the referee will buy it. I mean, and it's his know. problem. It's the official's problem. Exactly. exactly. Which is what we've done in basketball now. Somehow made it like the basketball player's problem or the game's problem. The officials are getting fooled left and right. And they're like, change the game. This is too <laughs> yeah. difficult. Yeah. So, yeah, while you can take advantage of it, sell it, I guess, and see if you can convince them of something uh, that's going to result in a free 15 just, for you. I, I'm I'm being semi sarcastic and I just hate the only semi though. I hate the QB. I hate the QB flop game. It's like, dude, you know, <laughs> don't 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 come out here and act like you've been like a sniper got a hold of you and then and then you just pop right up and like you know the, the whole thing, uh, Chris. I, I am so annoyed as a football fan every time there's some violent collision or again something like near the sideline and you just immediately know, oh, we're about to have replays. <laughs> We're about to have tweets. Should we shut down the game? I mean, it just has gone so wild, which is why I think we'll be talking about someday previewing uh, a video game at this point in time. I mean, this will be what this podcast is eventually because it's become too dangerous to even leave the house so we can't play real football. All right, what am I yelling about? It's too early for that. Let's get on to the next thing. You may be touching on part of the recipe right there, salesmanship from your quarterback. But that's just one of a few things we're going to get to as far as a recipe for an upset, which is what Texas Tech is looking for. We'll get to that coming up next on Locked On Texas Tech. First, today's episode brought to you by 
game time and buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be a stress inducing experience but if you've ever done it you know it can be especially last minute but not with game time game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for sports concerts and much much more not just fast secure and easy to use but you're also going to find unbeatable deals on last minute tickets and with their best price guarantee you can stop stressing and start Pre-game and download the Game Time app today and rest easy with the Game Time guarantee, knowing you're always going to get the best prices and you can have them in a flash delivered straight to your phone. Snag tickets without the stress with Game Time and just download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use the code Locked On College for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and use the promo code Locked On College. For $20 off, download the Game Time app today for last minute tickets and the lowest price guaranteed. Thanks for joining us on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Glad to have you along for the ride all week long. Have we have consoled one another? I think so. <laughs> I think there's been a little therapy here this week as we're getting ready for Saturday night from Jones Stadium. Would only be a slight upset, Chris, if the Red Raiders pull it off. And that's something we talked about earlier in the week. A little bit surprised uh, at the odds that Texas Tech is getting. But nonetheless, Ducks come to town as about a touchdown favorite, number 13 in the nation. Wouldn't be the wildest thing you've ever done if you pull off the uh, upset, but it would be an upset. So what do you think, man? Where does that have to start for Texas Tech this week to make that happen? Well, um, they're, they're, you know, Texas Tech's getting some some people uh, buying in uh, on their chances this weekend for sure. I think that it's not going to surprise a lot of people. I've seen that line come down from seven down to six and a half, now to even six. Uh, and I think I saw five and a half one place, depending on where you look. So it suggests to me that there's there's more money rolling in on the Red Raiders. But I don't think Oregon – Oregon is very much a uh, – or th- this this would be the stereotype of Oregon, Okay. And I, I think there's truth to this. They are a finesse, speed kind of program. Uh, they, they they have typically spread things out. They are you know all about the flash and the uniform and and all that. What they don't like is they don't like getting punched in the mouth. Typically, uh, are you good enough to do that? I think you're going to try uh, at some level. Uh, what does that look like? I can't really sit here and tell you, but you know you've got. You, you've got to be physical, um, and I think that you tried to be physical last weekend, but I think then it, it then you weren't, and then you were not smart at times with some of the things. But I think this is this is going to be, folks, the one of the best quarterbacks that you that you face. Uh, maybe one of the best quarterbacks that, at least with what he's put on paper in his college career, that's coming here in a while. Uh, I don't think he's a number one overall pick. But he might be a first round pick. Uh, Joey even told me that last night. He's like, the quarterbacks that are playing in this game are going to play in the NFL. Uh, and so he, he's very sure about his own guy, but he's also very sure about the other guy. And the other guy is in the elite category because this is a dude that 72% of his passes were completed last year, never had an Oregon quarterback ever gotten to the 70% completion rate. And we're talking, folks, we're talking Dan Fouts. We're talking Achille Smith. We're talking Marcus Mariota, uh, Bill Musgrave. I mean, you can go on and on. There's some legit dudes that have played, uh, you know, uh, try Justin Herbert, uh, who's playing for the Chargers. I mean, there's a long list of studs that have played that position. And he had the best season on paper of anybody last year. He threw for 29-plus touchdowns, ran for 14 Hmm. Only eight players had done that in, in the college game since the year 2000. So he's kind of a, an exception here, and he's going to be difficult to beat. I will tell you, if you're if you're there and you're watching, the, like literally 80% of his completions come in the middle of the field between the hashes. Okay? This isn't a typically a take a shot down the sideline guy. More often than not, he hits you over the, over the middle, down the seam. So, you know, that's where I get concerned about your your linebacker play, you know, your middle linebacker play specifically yeah. with, with Ben Roberts and Josiah Pierre. Uh, if those guys can hold up and just not get not get involved in a busted coverage, or I, I think you're I think you're gonna be fine and this game's gonna be, you know, close. 
I feel like Tech wins this game by a field goal, uh, 36-33. I told my man Spencer that in the crossover episode that we did. He had the he had the Ducks winning by 11. I may be out on a limb there, but I, I just I just think this is going to be the typical Tech in a good way. Uh, we hear typical Tech in a lot of ways where it's like, uh, oh, God, this is just typical Tech. Well, this would be one of the bright spots in that, okay, yeah, you did lose a game, but here's the payback is that you beat fifth-ranked a and you know, right, right after right. If you lose to North Texas. But, uh, yeah, I just I, – and, and I'll tell you, I'll be shocked. I'll be absolutely shocked if you can't run the ball a bit better. Does it make a lot of sense that you could do it against Oregon versus Wyoming? Not really. The why do you say that? Why do you think it, it'll improve? Or why do you have confidence it would improve? For whatever reason, I, and, and I don't know if it's some sort of witchcraft or some sort of fairy <laughs> dust or whatever. I'm but, up for it. <laughs> yeah, but, but playing on that turf last year was significantly different for them offensively in general, but the running game specifically. I, I, I have no rhyme or reason for it. And so – but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to buy into that theory because uh, I do think there's a level of embarrassment. I do think there was a level of disappointment, oh. and I think there's a level of pride that all this chatter about this program and they're spending this much money, and we got a big time team coming in here, the highest ranked since 1994. I'll be damned if we're gonna sit here and get and get get our butt kicked uh, at home. And in, in front of our home fans and start this thing out 0-2 yep. before we've really ever gotten started, you know, yet. So I think that the I think the big boys up front uh will, will play extremely well. Uh, and I think that your your running backs will benefit. If there is any la- lack of motivation whatsoever this week, then you've got a bigger problem, I think, than uh we understand. And yeah, I Bo it, Bo Nix is at the top of the list for me, obviously, and I'm going back to what Joey McGuire said about being disciplined in your pursuit of the quarterback or in your rush lanes, your blitz lane, whatever way you want to describe it. That is going to be paramount this week. So if that hadn't been hammered all week long, and if that doesn't improve, you're probably going to have another very long night uh, defensively and offensively. I want to say establish the ground game because. As for me and my house, we run the damn ball. On this podcast, it is run the damn ball week every week. I want to say that. I have, I mean, you just increased my faith by about half that you could, but it was at about a 2% coming into this. I have no confidence whatsoever, for whatever reason, that you're going to be able to. And I, I think I just saw last week that, all right, well, there's Taj Brooks. He's still Taj Brooks. And then I saw practically nothing. Uh, beyond that as far as impact and that wasn't just on a ball carrier it wasn't just on the offensive line but obviously combining for what was a disappointing night so if you're able to establish that I'm glad to hear you say it give me a little more hope you do know that we threw that turf away though right we got a whole new set in there so we'll see how this turf is going to impact them Uh, but I, I hope that's the case if you can establish a ground game which would be quite the departure from last week and maybe involving your quarterback too uh, then I think you're going to give yourself a chance in the fourth quarter. Whether you get over the hump, I don't know. Uh, but, man, it should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Hope you enjoy it, Chris, there on the sideline. We will have, of course, a masked rider grade coming up on the other side of the weekend. So hopefully uh, no run-ins there with the horsey and the rider. Hopefully the horse is remembering how to run again. It was a rebuilding year uh, for the masked rider. So looking forward to that debut as well. And the debut of a lot of things, man. Uh, we'll visit about it good or bad, on the other side of the weekend, Chris. Uh, Enjoy it, and we'll talk to you then. Keep the hope alive, uh, at least for one more week. Okay, Uh, come on. You know, we, 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 you know, let's just, you know, kumbaya here. Let's, uh, yeah, down with the ducks. (laughs) If it flies, it dies, okay? (laughs) All right, so uh, hope to see you all there. Uh, Enjoy yourself. Uh, hopefully, we, you know, the Red Raiders score more points uh, than the folks from Eugene. And uh, we'll be back here next week to talk about it. And as far as I know, I know some of you may be coming straight from dove hunting uh, to duck hunting. <laughs> as far as I know, still no rifle shotguns allowed at Jones Stadium. I, you may, if you want to bring it and ask at the gate, that's totally up to you. But I, I don't think they're allowing that. So just a word to the wise. Keep your firearms in the pickup, folks. For Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Subscribe on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. And we will see you on the other side for another round on Locked on Texas Tech.